Hey guys, welcome back to uh, livemoretech.com. Today I thought I'd do a short video on, on uh, sort of a comparison between two scanning packages that I have for scanning film. Now you can scan anything with them, but I use them for scanning film mostly. The last video I did was talking about scanning film with ViewScan, uh, which is which is my preferred method. I use you know, ColorPerfect plugin and ViewScan and a little bit of Photoshop, and I think get a, a really good end product, or a product at least that I'm very happy with. But there was a question from a gentleman, um, and I think he just purchased the Canon, the, the Canon 9000 um, Mark II scanner, and was asking about the scan gear software, how good it was, and uh, whether it was usable or not. So I thought I'd do a quick comparison today. Um, it's not going to be very scientific, but I thought I'd at least show kind of scanning the same film um, and some of the positives and benefits of, of both of the different software packages. So, so stay tuned, and, uh, and we'll jump right in. Okay, so let's start with the, the Canon scan utility. Um, so ScanGear is the package that comes uh, with the with the scanner that allows you to scan film, uh, among other things. But let's launch ScanGear. So there's you know there's definitely a lot of nice benefits of ScanGear. First of all, it's free. It comes with the scanner, like I said. Um, so you you know you're ready to go right out of the gate. Um, there's there is a basic mode. I guess one of the features that I do like about it is in basic mode. If I guess if you're trying to get from from film to digital image as quickly as possible. This is not a bad way to go. Um, mostly, and I would say specifically for if your digital images are going to stay digital. Um, if you're going to go to print, this may not be the best option. That's really kind of why I went with ViewScan was it allows quite a bit more control, which I can, I'll can i touch on a little bit after this. But from a simplicity sake, um, this the scan and utility or the, the, the scan gear can and utility does a, does a pretty darn good job. So under basic mode, it really just gives you a couple of options to click to kind of get in from here and out to a digital image as quick as possible. I like playing with advanced mode a little bit more. Um, just gives me a few more options and a little bit more control. Um, so let me uh, let me select the crops. I want to kill the crops, and we'll just because we're just going to scan one image here. So I'll zoom in a little bit. We can see what we're doing. So this is the image that we're going to pull in. Let's go down the side here and see what our options are. So our first setting is color negative film. Obviously, that's what we're going to do here. The scan area we can leave as auto detect because it's picked up on it. Okay. Um, we've got a couple of different color modes: color and 48-bit mode. Uh, let's choose 48-bit just to see if we can get as much juice out of this as possible. Um, the output resolution. Now in ViewScan, I, I push it to 4800. I know that the, technically on paper the Canon Scan says it can pull up to 9600, I think, but the reality of it is, from what I've, from what I understand, and what I've read is, 4800 is kind of pushing the limits. Even then, um, you're kind of pushing the limits of what the the Canon can pull in. So, so we'll try to at least match that. We'll go up to 4800 here. Um, we will leave the output size the same. So you can see, I'm going to have about a 480 megabyte image when it's done, which is which is fine because I'm going to resize that in Photoshop. I'm going to turn off all the as much messing around as I can here. I'll try to keep it as neutral as possible. So image settings I'll leave as none. Turn off unsharp mask. Everything else that I can turn off here is off. Um, I will put on high quality and apply that, but I'll leave the exposure just as it sits now. So the nice thing is even in advanced mode. So there's not a whole lot of settings to, to mess with here, which is kind of cool. It gives you a few options, which is good. Um, but if you do want to get in, if you want to go in and do a lot of color correction, if you want to mess with your saturation and color balance and your brightness and contrast and your histogram and your levels and all kinds of stuff here, you can you can do that in here um, before you scan it out. So um, I guess the idea being really, if you just want to use this package to kind of get your images the way you want them finally, um, you can do that and save them out and you're good to go. I'm not going to mess with any of that here because I want to. I'm going to do it basically the same way as I would with ViewScan, just to kind of see what that final image looks like in comparison-wise. So I think we're good to go. I'm going to scan this image. Um, it's going to take a couple of minutes, so we'll hit scan, uh, get it running. I'll, I'll pause the video, and uh, when it's done, we'll come back and, and continue on. Okay, so the image is done scanning. Uh, it took about two minutes. Not a big deal. Uh, I'm just going to click OK, save that. And uh, just going to process it here for a second, and we're good. So there's my there's my image. It's a TIFF file. I saved it specifically as a TIFF file because that's what I do in ViewScan. So again, we'll try to keep it as similar as possible. So it's about 500 megabytes. All right. So let's close the um, 
scan utility and let's do the same thing in view scan or let's go through at least the process that I would do in view scan. So we'll open up view scan here, click continue. Um, I'm going to open up now I'm using Ektar. This is 120 film. It's Kodak Ektar. So I already have a preset in there. Uh, I'm just going to get the preview resolution down. We don't need to worry about that. So we'll hit preview, we'll bring up the scan here. Okay, so let me turn lock film based color off. So um, I'm not going to go through too many of the details here. Uh, you can check out my other video. Um, I have another video talking about view scan in a little more in depth. Um, needless to say, I will zoom in and we'll get that same picture here. So let me kind of get my crop bars in. Now the biggest, one of the biggest benefits for me, so I'm going to save it out as 4800 DPI, DPI um, just to, to go through this quickly. I've got all the filtering off, um, color balance, none. Uh, I'm going to output it out. The, this is the biggest thing for me is that I like the most out of this is I can save out as a raw file. So saving it as a raw file, and if you watch my other video, um, and you'll see here, I, I'm getting a the actual color negative. So I'm still getting the negative. I'm I'm saving, saving the most amount of information in the file with without without having the software doing any color processing to it. Okay, so it's finished scanning here. Uh, now, last thing we need to do is just save out the image. So you can see it's about 500 megabytes, which is you know roughly the same size as uh, what we were getting out of the the, the scan gear. So let's close view scan. So you can see here my two images. So this was the one in the IMG one was the one coming out of the scan gear, the Canon scan gear utility. And then the scan 00001 is the uh, the one that we just saved out of view scan. So they're roughly the same size. And I guess that makes sense because they're both saved out at 4800 DPI. So now the next step we're going to do is uh, I'm going to open them up in Lightroom. We'll import them into Lightroom. So I'll find my folder. So here these guys are and we'll click import. Now the first obvious thing that we're going to see the difference is is scan gear doesn't allow me to save it out as that uh, the, the negative it's already done processing on the on the image uh, which is kind of a bummer i really like the ability to uh, i like the control of that that color negative um, to then kind of play with it and, and do my own color grading and, and all that kind of stuff so so anyways we'll keep this the same first thing i'll do is let me open this up. The next step I would do here is uh, edit in Photoshop. So I'll open up Photoshop, edit the original. One of the things we want to do, obviously, is bring the size down to something a little more usable. Um, and while I'm here, I'm going to bring it into Color Perfect. I don't even know if it really makes that much much sense to do it here because I lose the whole ability of selecting the film style and having this software apply the characteristics of the film that I'm using. But nonetheless, I can at least pull down the clips and kind of bring that down to something a little more usable, which is probably a good thing anyways. Now, I could do that in, in Photoshop or in Lightroom, but for, again, trying to keep this somewhat similar just to see what the end product is between the two, we'll keep it the same. Okay, the last thing I'm going to do is we're going to resize this. So this is where, obviously, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, you can make it as big or as small as you want, but maybe we go with... Uh, 3000. 3000 gives me tons of size. If I wanted to print this, I could. Um, if I wanted to kind of, you know, shrink it down afterwards and make a smaller for the for the web or a smaller version for the web, I could as well. So that's giving me about a 40 megabyte image. You know what? Maybe we'll go down to 2500. Give me about 27 and a half megabytes. That's that's fine. So we'll click OK. We'll close this, save it, and we're done. All right. So now I'm going to do that with the image from View Scanner, the color negative. So we're going to edit that in Photoshop. Edit the original. I'm going to use my color perfect here. Now here, because I'm a color negative, which I need to change. So there's my color. There's my by selecting color negative. Um, if you watch the other video, this color perfect plugin, which I highly recommend, um, it's going to turn it into a positive for me. Now the coolest part here is I can select my film. So it's already selected for me. I think it was the last one I used here, but you know, you've got all your different films. Um, that, uh, the idea being that it's looking at, you know, it knows the properties of what that film has from a color balance perspective, I guess, and uh, does a pretty good job of uh, applying those features to it or those specifications. So I'm going to do the same. All I'm going to do here is pull down the 
clipping a little bit and get closer to zero, which is what I normally do anyways. And we'll click OK. And then we'll resize this to the same size as well as the other one. We'll go 2500 here as well, 27.6. So pretty much the same size. And close, save, good to go. So that's my that would be my process. That is my process. Um, that's my process regardless, I guess, of whether you're using the Cano scan or, uh, or view scan. So let's take a look at these and see kind of what the difference is in the end product. So right away, you know, the, the, I guess the thing that I don't like with the Cano scan is because it's processing and doing the color reproduction right away for me, I'm kind of, I'm a little more locked into what it's going to give me. Now, sure, I can go in obviously, and I can play with, you know, with, with my levels and saturation and do all that kind of stuff. But because it's already turned it into a pretty saturated product to begin with, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't want to say I'm stuck, but I have, I guess I have less leeway to play with. Now, that being said, it's a pretty decent looking image right off the bat. Maybe I just want to bump up the exposure a little bit. You know, um, you know, I don't know, highlights, low light, whatever, play with this a little bit. And, you know, you're going to get a very usable image. Um, but the image coming out of view scan, because it's color negative, gives me a lot more leeway to play with. It's just a much more neutral image. I can apply my own filtering. Um, I can, you know, the white balance doesn't blow out as quick. Um, you know, playing with the exposure and contrast, it gives me a lot more flexibility to turn it into you know, an actual image that that I see in my head or that I saw in my eyes when I took the picture. So it's a lot more leeway. Being able to pull that color negative in gives me a lot more, it seems like it gives me a lot more dynamic range to play with. So, you know, that being said, the actual end quality, if I reset them back both to where they were, um, if we kind of take a look at them side by side. So this is the, this is the scan, the view scan image. You can see it's a lot more neutral. Um, this is the scan out of Cano, out of the scan of Cano scan. It's already applied lots of contrast. You can see some vibrance, so it's done some processing on its own. Um, you know, that being said, the actual image, and this is a four to one zoom, the image itself, maybe we'll bump it to three to one, four to one is pretty extreme, but just a resolution standpoint, they're pretty similar. You know, this is certainly maybe looks a little more uh, pixelated and maybe and dirty because of the, there's, there is some extra processing happening on here. You can just tell by the color difference and the contrast, but you know, they both do a pretty decent job of, of, of getting a high resolution image in. So it really kind of boils down to what you want to do. I think, um, you know, can scan, look, I think it's about 80 bucks or 70 bucks, uh, or sorry, a view scan is about 70 or 80 bucks. And I think it's worth it just because I love the ability to bring in that neutral image and I love playing with it. Um, uh, color perfect is great. It does a great job. So the, those two packages combined gives me the most flexibility, but at the end of the day, um, you know, Canascan does a pretty good job as well. It it gives you a high resolution image. Um, it does do some processing, but again, if if what you're if what you're working with is ma mostly the digital world and you're not really printing, um, you know, it it's it's going to be it's going to be a pretty quick and efficient way to to get your images into the computer. So so I thought I'd just do this again. This is not a scientific test, and there's a million other parameters I could have played with to probably make these a little more neutral, but. I wanted to just to show you two kind of quick ways to get images in and really what the final results uh, can look like. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, either way, uh, good luck, have fun, keep shooting pictures, keep shooting film, and enjoy, stick around, and uh, we'll, we'll do another video soon. Thanks, guys. See ya.